we're becoming a little more regular. <laughs> Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> we won't uh, go there. <laughs> You read my mind. <laughs> but anyway. Well, regular on the internet. That's what we're doing. We're regular on the internet. Praise the Lord. And uh, what last time we were going to get into was authority. Okay, so two times ago, you mentioned that you had become a properties owner. Yes. Owners in Iowa. In Iowa. Was it, uh, yes. We've suddenly. got some farmland. Okay. And has some farmland. So now you, you got a, th- a deed signed over to you that you now are owners of land in Iowa. So several weeks ago, I was listening to a minister talking about a, another minister who we all know who was vacationing up in a place in Colorado. And they would go up there and vacation. And, and, and somebody asked him, just told him, you, need, you should buy property up here. And he's like, I ain't going to buy property up here, you know, because the place had a lot of just witchcraft and other stuff going on. You know, Colorado's pretty new agey, right? <laughs> so anyway, the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to buy some property up here. So really? he's like, okay. And the Lord said, I'm assigning you to be the keeper of the valley. So he bought some property An there. Interesting title. So like a vacation place to okay. go to. So okay. the Lord said, I'm, I'm you're making you the keeper of this valley. And so they began to, to uh, you know, just take authority and that kind of stuff. But come to find out there was a witchcraft group of they were planning on building a worldwide headquarters in that very spot. Really? In, in that town. And so they just began to pray and set up, you know, take their authority. Of it. And pretty soon in the news media, they, they announced in the newspaper, well, we're no longer coming to this town. And then after a while, the they Lord... They decided said, to move, huh? Well, the Lord said, told them, okay, you've fulfilled your assignment. You can sell the property now. Well, I thought... Oh my goodness, this is, and then so the person that was preaching this was saying, okay, so we, God has made us keepers of the valley of our families, of our cities, yes. of our states, yeah. and to a certain extent of our nation. Yeah. And I thought, okay, so you talked about, you now have, you have a land ownership up there. Yes. Well, we have greater authority in the spiritual realm where it matches up with the natural realm, meaning yes. Yes. when we are over our family, we have greater spiritual authority. Right. When we have a job, we have greater spiritual authority to yes. pray about things about that job, yes. whether we're employer or employer, you know, we have different relationships there of authority. As a citizen of the city or the state, we have authority to pray and, and be, you know, have an input in this region yeah. as citizens of our <laughs> nation. Yeah. So then, uh, there's a student that I've been dealing with at, at the Rama, and this particular person, the Lord has le- led them to go to these tax sales. And this person has been buying properties for a few hundred dollars. But they're empty lots or run-down houses <laughs> right. in different cities around Oklahoma. Oh, my. She doesn't know why the Lord is <clears throat> having them do that. But I said... But they want to put like prayer gardens or uh, houses for different uses, you know, sure, people. Sure. But I said, you realize that by God g- giving you title deed to these different areas, it is, that is giving you a spiritual footprint. Absolutely. To have authority yeah. in that area. Absolutely. You know, and so when you said that about Iowa, now you have you have a we footprint have there, yes, and you have authority, a voice, a greater voice of authority to yes. pray and speak and yes. decree yes. into that region. Right. And it's it's actually land that is in more than one place. Yeah. Uh, and so we not only have family there, but now we actually have land. And, you know, when I think of uh, just exactly what you're talking about, if we uh, if, if if Jesus is king of kings, then we are kings. Exactly. We are kings and priests. And when it comes to authority and the kingdom of heaven, uh, there you cannot have a king, you cannot be a king if you don't have a kingdom. It requires a kingdom to be a king. And so, uh, you know, it takes property to be a king. Yes. So when you... When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you come into the family of God 
you also come into the kingdom. And I don't think people really realize the value of the kingdom. What, because I am a king in the kingdom, that means that even, you know, this, this studio that we're in right here, it is in my house. Your domain. So it's my domain. So this land here that I own, see, it's part of my domain. And I have authority here. Right. When, when this gal that you're talking about is buying land in all these varied places, that's amazing. It because is. Because it just, it just increases her authority throughout Oklahoma. <laughs> Around, yeah. You know, and it's amazing. We need to understand to have spiritual that understand. authority yes. and how it works. And it works very similar to natural authority and many times in harmony with it. Like yes. the soldier said to Jesus, I too am a man under authority. I have people under me. I have people over me. So he understood that Jesus was operating in a sphere of authority. Isn't so, that amazing? So the kingdom, see, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Yes. But he is going to establish it in the world. So right now, he doesn't have a physical kingdom set up in a particular nation or country. But the real estate of God's kingdom is people. So you and I are an extension of the kingdom of God. Every time a person gets saved, remember he said, go out and preach to them the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, and tell them the kingdom of, of God has come to you. Yes. Every time a person is saved, delivered, healed, the kingdom of God is gaining real estate. Mm -hmm. So the real estate of God's, the physical real estate of God's kingdom on earth is people. And the more people that are in the kingdom and subject to its rules and, and laws, then those people influence the earth around them until such a time when Jesus comes back and sets up that physical kingdom when we will be the ones in charge and, uh, and all those in him. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, there's that cooperation between the kingdom of God and earth by he told us to pray, thy, will be, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done. On earth. On earth. In yes, other words, as heaven. ambassadors. Yes. Meaning we are of another kingdom, but yes. we're in a foreign kingdom, yes. meaning the world. <laughs> yes. We are ambassadors, and we are to decree the will of heaven into our domain. Yes. You know, an yes. ambassador and an embassy, in any country you go to, when a nation has an embassy there, that embassy is sovereign territory yes. of that nation. Yes. So I don't care if I'm in communist exactly. China or that Muslim uh, Saudi land. Arabia. Yeah. When you have an American embassy, that is the United States. That is the United States. And and every country signs on to honor that with each exactly. other. Right? So exactly. So we are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. So where we where our natural authority comes in contact kingdom with us, the spiritual authority of God flows through us, yes. and that is our domain, yes. and we should exercise that authority yeah, by being uh, the light to drive out darkness, the truth to drive out deception, the love to drive out the hate, Hallelujah. the righteousness to drive out the wickedness. In other words, is Jesus shining the light. We are the keepers of our valley. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which, which flows really right into it's harvest time. It, I mean, uh, you know, I think um, when, when people, can I say this, people of the world as compared to people of the kingdom or people of darkness? Actually, there's it's two different kingdoms. The reality, the kingdom of darkness and right. the kingdom of, yeah. Right. Um, now what I was going to say, I just lost it. It'll come back. Though. It will come back. It will come back. <laughs> because we're in the kingdom. <laughs> But no, there, there, there's that overlapping of natural authority and heavenly kingdom authority. And yeah. wherever you're at in, in your world, as a child of God, you are an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven to bring heaven's will down on that in that earth. Absolutely. And you know, the word earth and, and Hebrew and Greek both mean land. So that's where people get confused, like in Bible prophecy, when it says he ruled over the whole earth or the whole earth worshiped the beast. It's the word land. Also, which doesn't necessarily mean the globe. It means that region, you know. Mm -hmm. So you're the, the <clears throat> heaven, let, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this land as mm -hmm. it is in heaven. And what land is that? Where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, right from the start when, when Jesus, oh, Jesus, when God put Adam in the garden. Mm -hmm. And he said, basically, he said, you are to rule and reign. Right here. Exactly. Take on the earth. Now, here's an interesting thought. 
That Garden of Eden was a little bitty spot in Iraq. You look at the you look at the globe. Here's a little spot in the southern part of Iraq, by Kuwait, where the rivers come together. Right. And then you zoom out. You got if you look at the modern map, you got Iraq and Kuwait, and you got Iran, you got Saudi Arabia. As you keep zooming out, you realize when God put man on the earth to subdue it. He gave them one little piece of real estate, right. and he wanted them to duplicate that around exactly. the world. He wanted them exactly. to take a dominion over yes. the entire take earth, authority. to take that garden, which was the kingdom, yes. and spread it. And spread it. Yep. Yep. Hallelujah. And really, uh, his thoughts have not changed. No, they haven't. You know, Satan <clears throat> gained that authority. And really, I mean, today we know that, you know, he's the ruler of this world, but we are not of this world. Ever since so, God, ever since God created man, it was it, to rule and reign. Here. He's put dominion in our DNA. Yeah, and and isn't it interesting that when I think even Christians, uh, I know for me when I when I began to realize that that that's what that is on the inside of me that's that's reaching for something and and. People are reaching for something, but they don't know what it is. But there is a dominion in all of us. Yeah, it, 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 we are <clears throat> we're made in the image and likeness of God, and God created us for dominion. He created us to to take dominion over something uh, that that is going to look like the kingdom of God. That's what he 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 wanted to take the kingdom of heaven and bring it here to earth through mankind you know, and that's, expand it on the earth. Well, that's still his thought. And, and that's why there are wars and kingdom against kingdom today because you've got fallen man without God, but they're still designed to take dominion to take and dominion. to conquer. Exactly. And without God, you conquer one another. And it, wickedness It's just rules. a war. But it's that original intent for God. He put, He did not create us to be failures, but to no. be overcomers. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we fight. <laughs> that's why we fight. <laughs> Whether it's good or evil, it's why we fight, because yeah, we're, we're designed to be overcomers. Yeah. But it seems like people do not finally find, you know, what we would call home. Like a f phone home, right? Yeah. Of like, you find, right, right. like, you know, you finally find home, and you don't really find home until you realize the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And and it's Jesus Christ. He is the door. I mean, it, it, it's coming into that kingdom through Jesus Christ. And when you realize the authority that's built on the inside of you is actually at rest, when you discover that your authority is to be operating within the kingdom of heaven, and and some of that authority you can say is to be used at harvest time yeah to to take more dominion over this earth but really it's to 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 share the dominion of the kingdom of heaven to other people because that's going to release them. I mean, they're, they're all of a sudden going to realize this is what I have been looking for all my life. I don't need to look anywhere else. It's the kingdom of heaven is what I was missing. So one of my favorite portions of scripture, is I, as I tell people, I've got 66 favorite books of the Bible. <laughs> 27 <laughs> is that all? 27 favorite books of the New Testament. But anyway... Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the authority of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in God. whom we have redemption through his blood, Amen. even the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So this life is training for reigning. Training for reigning. Amen. And getting that harvest in is part yeah, of that. Yeah, and, and that's that really could be a whole nother, uh, a whole nother time. Of yeah. us talking that Amen. that we're not just talking about even, um, you know, when it comes to the end time harvest, that that when uh, Jesus comes in the air, when 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 we uh, are are raptured out of here, 
that's not the end. Mm -mm. It's just the beginning. And so training for reigning is not only valuable for now, but it's valuable for all of eternity. You got, you got the millennium be, coming up, a thousand years on absolutely. earth. Absolutely. Then you got a new heaven and a new, earth, a new heaven and, and new we earth. go in there reigning with him through that. You yes, know? yes, forever. And you got ages, the ages to come that Paul talks about. Yes, so, I mean, yeah. We're in, a, we're in a church age now. Then so we're going to go into a millennial age, right age, but there are ages, plural. Eight ages to come. So, yeah, amen. So, so what you do here in this life, it helps train you for what's what's ahead as far for as what's ahead. And there's a lot ahead. And there's a lot ahead. So. And it's good. I mean it's something you want to train for. Amen. <laughs> you wanna you wanna be the best you can be. Amen. Oh, so be faithful unto God. Be faithful. We will see you next, next time. Next time. All right? We'll see you next time.